Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to go over some of Remington's best cartridges. So I'm going to share what I believe are the top 10 Remington cartridges, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's first talk about the criteria I'm using to rank these 10 Remington cartridges. First is, how does the Remington cartridge do against the competition? What made it succeed over you know, the Winchesters or the Weatherbys or whatever cartridge it may be. The other is how is the performance? Why are people picking it? Uh, is it offering something that uh, the competition can't match? Um, and then next is, this one's pretty big too, is popularity. So let's get into the list. At number 10, and this one barely made it into the list, is the 7mm Remington Ultra Magnum. Now, this cartridge made it for a couple reasons. Number one, it is the most powerful 7mm Magnum that's offered in a factory cartridge and rifle that you can get. It is based off the 300 Remington Ultra Magnum case, and it is an absolute beast. Now the other reason that it made number 10 is my channel voted for it to beat out the 338 rum and the 375 rum. Extremely fast, extremely flat, and just to put into perspective, I have a 7mm Remington Magnum cartridge case, and the rum absolutely dwarfs this 7mm Rem Mag case. So, it's a lot of medicine. Now, why is it not higher on the list? I think the biggest reason is that it has short barrel life and it just isn't that popular. Coming in at number nine is the 416 Remington Magnum. Now this cartridge is a true dangerous game cartridge, really made for Africa. So what this cartridge is, uh, the parent case is the 8mm Remington Magnum, really, which is basically based off the 375 H&H. &H. And so what you could think of it as is it's like a 375 necked up to 416. And this thing is an absolute beast. The only cartridge that's more powerful than this in the 416 caliber is the 416 Weatherby Magnum. So what is the performance like with this? Well, you're shooting a 400 grain bullet almost 2,500 feet per second. So this thing's a true heavy hitter. I've shot one. The recoil is pretty massive, but uh, not too terrible. It's like a souped up 4570. At number eight is the 280 Remington. Now this cartridge had a pretty troublesome start to uh, to its life as a, uh, a hunting cartridge. And uh, thankfully it survived. It, uh, it's still not the most popular cartridge, but it's really efficient and it's just a great all around cartridge. So why is it so great? Well, it's based off the 30-06. So the parent case is the 30-06 and some people say this is the best version of the 30-06. So when you talk about like the 270 or the 30-06, uh, a lot of people will say this is the best one. So let's just go ahead and look at the performance real quick. Okay, so when you're shooting a 150 grain bullet, it's going 2,900 feet per second. That's pretty darn good. And the recoil is not gonna be terrible like any of the Magnums that I've talked about previously. Uh, it's just a good all around gun but it's only number eight due to its lack of success and popularity. At number seven is the 260 Remington. This cartridge came out before the 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, but it's still not that old. It came out in 1997. And what it is, is a 308 neck down to 6.5. And so it's a very efficient cartridge uh, it's a pretty darn good performer that's sadly just been really overshadowed by all of the 6.5 Creedmoor success. I mentioned that uh, this cartridge was overshadowed by the grand success of the 6.5 Creedmoor. 
Now, this cartridge is actually, you could argue that it's actually a little bit more powerful than a 6.5 Creedmoor. Of recently, I think this cartridge is starting to become a bit more successful. Now, during the pandemic, the only 6.5 cartridge ammo I could ever find on the shelf was this, the 260 Remington. So I had that going for it. Let's just look at the performance real quick, though. So, now you got to realize Hornady makes the 6.5 Creed more. So, some books might show the 260 Remington actually going quicker. Uh, but a 130 grain going well, over 2,900 feet per second. And then the 140 grain, it's going 27. Again, in other books, it's probably going quicker. Uh, they really want to pump their numbers up for the 6.5 Creed more. Just what I've noticed. But this is a good cartridge that's starting to become a bit more popular. At number six is the 25-06 Remington. And if you haven't been able to tell by now, Remington loves to take very popular Wildcat cartridges, like the 25-06, like the 260 Remington, and make them into their own factory offered cartridges. And it's worked very well for them. Uh, that's not a dig at Remington. Uh, but it's, it's just something fun to, to notice. So the 25-06, as you might expect, it is a 30-06 case, neck down to 25 caliber. And this cartridge and the 257 Weatherby have basically kept the 25 caliber from not becoming completely obsolete. I mean, I know there's the 257 Roberts, but I don't think it's really been very successful in the U.S. But... Uh, this cartridge and the 257 Weatherby have really been your best options for a 25 caliber. And these, this cartridge, specifically 25-06, is an absolute great uh, deer antelope cartridge. So let's just take a look at its performance. Okay, so shooting a 90 grain bullet at 3,400 feet per second, 100 grain at 33. A lot of people are using 110 grain bullets. When you hand load it, you can get it going 3,100 feet per second. We are now to the top five, and at number five is a really good one. This is the 7mm08 Remington. Again, another Wildcat cartridge. And the parent case is the 308, so it's just a 308 case, neck down to 7 millimeter. And what you get with this cartridge is very good ballistics very efficient. Um, it's kind of a per perfect match, you know, that 308 case with the 7 millimeter bullet. Let me just show you some of the performance. So a 140 grain bullet going 2,900 feet per second, a 150 grain going 2,800. This is a great cartridge, and it also has pretty mild recoil as well. So a lot of youth uh, love shooting this cartridge. And I would say it's on the border of being an elk cartridge. Um, not my first choice, but people have done it. And I think it depend, obviously depends on the range, but it definitely can take some elk. At number four is the Behemoth 300 Remington Ultra Magnum. Now, funny enough, Remington really didn't have any cartridges in the 30 caliber until this one. And this was introduced in 1999. It was kind of a trailblazer because up to that point, most, if not all of the 30 caliber magnums had belts. And so this one does not, which I know a lot of reloaders love the non-belted magnums. And this one is an absolute beast. So it's faster than a 300 Weatherby, definitely faster than a 300 Wind Mag. The only cartridge that really beats it in performance is the 3378 Weatherby. Now to give you some perspective, here is a 300 Winchester Magnum, and as you can see, the 300 ROM is quite a bit bigger. It's just a massive case. And, you know, it's it's not all good news with the 300 ROM. Uh, barrel life is a little suspect for this cartridge. You know, there's a lot of recoil in the 300 ROM, so it's not the most popular 300 cartridge. So that's why I wouldn't put it probably top three is because it's just not as popular. At number three is the very popular 22250 Remington. If I were to only recommend one cartridge for 
varmint hunting, this would be it. So again, this is based off a popular Wildcat cartridge. The parent case is the 250-3000. And uh, funny enough, that was the first factory cartridge to ever hit 3,000 feet per second, hence the name. Well, the 22-250, well, took that and went bonkers with its velocity. So it's that case neck down to 22 caliber. And just looking at a 35 grain bullet, you can hand load that thing to over 4,400 feet per second. It is one of the fastest cartridges in the world. It's not the fastest, but it's up there. And, uh, you know, it, it's such a great cartridge to shoot. There's almost no recoil. It's extremely fast. Just a great all around varmint cartridge. At number two is the 7mm Remington Magnum. Now this is one of the most popular magnums in America for big game hunting. It just hits the right spot. It's, it's not crazy recoil like the rums and it's not extremely overbore like the rums. It's, it's just a good cartridge that gives good performance. You know, it's going to beat the 30 out 6 but it's not going to have as much recoil as a 300 Winchester Magnum. And, uh, you know, from the start, it, it was wild success. You know, it came out with the Remington 700 rifle, which could be argued as one of the best rifles ever made, at least back then. And let's just look at the performance. A 150 grain bullet going 3,000 feet per second. You know, the 160 going... Again, 3,000, and the 175 going 2,900. It offers great performance while not absolutely destroying your shoulder. At number one is the 223 Remington. I just could not put this any other place other than one. This cartridge is easily the most popular cartridge in America, especially when you count its cousin, the 556 NATO. And really, they're just about identical uh, proportions. Um, just the 5.56 has more free bore, and so it can have more pressure. But the 223 Remington, it's kind of your do-it-all 22 caliber cartridge. You know, it's it's great for varmint, and it's also great, obviously, in self-defense when you're using an AR-15. So how did it become so popular? Well, number one reason is the US military and NATO adopted its close cousin, the 556 NATO. This cartridge has very little recoil. It's a fast cartridge as well. And it's darn good, again, as I said before, with varmint and also hog. If you're in Texas, you know what I mean. And so, you know, I don't see this cartridge going anywhere anytime soon even with the 277 sig fury and uh it's still going to be the most popular cartridge in america